Village District Monthly Meeting. Could we all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. I didn't print enough agendas today, so... <laughs> Welcome, everyone. Uh, we're going to start off. Keith. We, uh, um, you want to go, Bob? Sure. Okay. We invited Keith Noyes to our meeting tonight. He just retired from the Department of Public Works for the town. And we in the precinct and down at the beach are extremely appreciative of everything you and your people did all winter. Without the incredible effort you made, I'm not sure we could have gotten in or out of the beach, or the fire and safety equipment got, could have gotten to the beach. A lot of times we think of public safety as police and fire. Boy, last winter, DPW was right up at the top of the list in terms of providing public safety. And to put a little flesh on the bone, up to about the middle of January, this was a non-winter. Then nature said, if he's going to retire this year, we're going to make it memorable. <laughs> and basically, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we ordered that so it could have a little symbolic <laughs> meaning. <laughs> so, so from late January uh, into early March, we said we'll give him a little over two years' worth of snow in six weeks to handle. And to complicate that, we'll make it so cold, none of it will melt. And as it kept piling up, we'll give them a few pickup trucks, which can't push six or eight feet of snow around very easily. But in spite of that, you kept the roads open, and you did one fantastic job. And I also would applaud the selectmen for sparing no expense. You people spent what you had to spend. You were fortunate you could find private contractors when the work they had was overwhelming. You have people who were worn out and your equipment was breaking down, but somehow we continue to get from here there. And so Keith, to help you remember your experience, we got you a little symbolic present. Well, thank you very much. I just want to add a little bit. Um, not just this winter, but any time I've called or we needed something, uh, we needed extra barrels brought around or we needed help in the playground, um, you're fantastic. And all your, your crew is fantastic. And I just want to thank you from, from the three of us as well. Thank you so well, much. Well, thank you. And it means a lot to me for this little bit of recognition. And I just want to say that, you know, the last four years working for the town of Hampton has been great. You know, all in all, the Sometimes the politics have been a little testy in this town. And sometimes I've gone home and my wife said, are you okay? <laughs> yeah. But uh, all in all, it's a great community. And uh, i got to tell you, this winter was challenging. And, and, you know, I think one of the things this area has to look at is, you know, all these roads were built for summer camps. And now what's happening that some of them are only 10, 12 feet wide and with no turnarounds at the end or cul-de-sacs. And what's happened is more and more people are buying these places and living in the year round, expecting the rental services and putting the pressure on us. And we don't have the additional resources. So uh, God bless whoever you know ultimately takes over for me because I, I can see it's only even in the future, even if it's not as much snow, you're still going to have the issue of more and more people wanting the services like the sidewalks down and, and, and completed and all the roads done in time and fashion. So I think mean, the community's got a lot of challenges ahead of them, but, you know, it's got some good people you know, working for the town, so I'm confident that, you know, things will happen and, and, and will be taken care of in the future. But I've enjoyed working with you guys and everything, and, and uh, you know, I am going to miss the town, but there's certain aspects that I'm not going to miss. To be truthful. But thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Human sandwiches. That's right. I'm going to get my wife to go along with me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you. 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 Thank you
Okay, there's a, there's a huge issue that's going on uh, with fishing, fishing off the coast of New Hampshire, Maine, Massachusetts, uh, where they are limiting the amount of fish, fishing days. Yeah. All right, all right. Well, I'll let, I'm going to let you. You're, you're going to be on that mic very soon. So, but you can, whoever wants to be. All right. So the, the, there's a new organi organization, the, the GOMCRFA, Gulf of Maine Charter and Recreational Fishermen's Association. Just yeah, blah, 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 say it three times fast. So um, the village district would like to be able to support you guys and what you're doing. So we'd like you to. Give us a little more information of what's going on. Uh, the 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 that the thing that disturbs me is they they don't seem to limit the amount of these big trawlers out there with huge nets coming up and wiping out the fish. But some guy with a with a rod and reel they t they say that he's taking too many fish. So it really bothers me. So I, if you guys want to get up and speak, that would be great, and um, we'll talk about it. If you don't mind, I'll kind of give an introduction and then let's. Uh, yeah, That's great. great. My name's Chris Munns, uh, Five Recession Way. Um, I wanted to just, I'll just provide you a little bit of background and a little bit of a story, and then, you know, Les can give you the, the real world of what's actually happening out there. Um, as you may know, responsibility for fishing practices within the Gulf of Maine falls under the National Marine Fisheries Service, which is an office of the no National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, and NOAA it itself falls under the jurisdiction of the U.S. Department of Commerce. So it's a, it's a federal issue. The federal government um, um, uh, oversees this. Um, you know, it's not, it's not been a secret that there have been many concerns raised about the depletion of fishing stock in the Gulf of Maine for many years now. Um, and although I was not familiar with the details, it was certainly something that I that I knew we needed to address. So last September, when I was still a state representative, I received a letter from a, um, a mysterious person called Terry Johnson, who I'd never met before, sharing some concerns about the new regulations that NOAA was planning to implement on November 1st. And when I saw the letter, my first reaction is, well, you know, something along the lines of, well, you know, we got to suck it up. we got to do something um, to protect the people in <coughs> the fishing industry. And although I knew that the state of New Hampshire didn't really have much to do with the jurisdiction, I felt it was my responsibility to at least talk to the fishermen involved. What I learned was the following. First of all, Mr. Johnson was not a commercial fisherman. Um, he's a recreational fisherman from, doesn't even live on the seacoast. Um, he lives uh, inland. Uh, he's a customer of one of the five uh, major charter boat fleets that operate out of New Hampshire seacoast. And the fact that you know, he would take it upon himself to write a letter to legislators to try to get them interested in this. I think it says a lot about the dedicated customer base that the fishing fleet has. Second, what I learned was the regulations that NOAA were proposing applied to all fish in the Gulf of Maine. Third, the data used by NOAA to form its policies is inconclusive at best and suspect at worst. And then what I learned was that the proposed regulations not only apply to commercial <coughs> fishermen, and not only apply to charter boat operators, but they apply to all recreational fishermen as well. Um, and that means any resident in the state of New Hampshire that wants to take a boat out onto the water and go fishing, <coughs> um, they, they're, they're subject to these regulations. And when I heard that, I thought, you know, that doesn't make any sense. To your point, Chuck, about how, how you know, how does, how does, you know, throwing a line in the water and pulling one, two, and three, four fish out of the water how does that have the same environmental impact as a commercial trawler that's pulling a net behind itself? It didn't make any sense to me. Um, and it didn't make any sense to Governor Hassan, Congresswoman Shea Porter at the time, Senators Ayotte and Shaheen. They all contacted NOAA last summer to ask them to reconsider their position. Um, but uh, it, didn't, it didn't work. The regulations went into, into effect in early November. And what they did is they not only um, expanded the area where commercial fishermen fishing was banned, but they also extended the ban to recreational fishermen. So for since November 1st, and Les can tell you in more detail, but since November 1st, nobody has been able to fish off the coast of New Hampshire except for the month of December and February. 
And you know, December was a was a so-so month, but as you just talked about, February wasn't exactly a nice <laughs> month, and I don't think too many people wanted to go fishing. So, for all intents and purposes, from November first forward, nobody's been able to fish off the coast of New Hampshire. Um, and um, the concern is that those regulations are temporary until <coughs> until May, um, and the concern is that they may be made permanent in May. And you know that seems to be the direction that NOAA is headed, and that that would that would be devastating. Um, it would be devastating not only to the charter boat operators, but to local hotels and industry and, and restaurants as well. Um, we did a really quick estimate of what the direct losses would be, and it totals six point <coughs> seven million dollars. Is that for uh, the areas? <clears throat> that's for that. That's just the lost revenue to the charter boat operators, and an estimate of the lost revenue. From uh, restaurants and hotels, that's a very, very much of a back of the envelope uh, estimate. One of the things that we're doing right now is we have a group of students from UNH working to quantify that and come up with what the ec the true economic impact is, and we expect that that's going to be you know many, many times higher. Um, we've been we we've gotten good support from the state legislative delegation. Um, they introduced a regulation a resolution earlier this year. That called on NOAA to revise the regulations. That resolution passed in New Hampshire Senate over uh, that New Hampshire House overwhelmingly, and it's now waiting for action by the Senate. Um, to to really move this issue forward, one of the things that we did is we formed this association, which I said the title just flows off your off your tongue: the <laughs> Gulf of Maine Charter and Recreational Fishing Association. We've already signed up over 65 members. We're actively recruiting other charter boat operators and recreational fishermen. We, at our last meeting, we had a recreational fisherman from New York come to our meeting, which again shows you how um, committed they are and how much they want to help. Um, we're very interested in having local businesses join the association, and and you know we've been talking with the Chamber of Commerce, and we'd love local businesses to sign up. Anyone that's interested in joining the association can go to the website, which is. Um, uh, www.gomcrfa.com. Um, the congressional delegation is very supportive. Um, Senator Ayotte's staff, Senator Shaheen's staff, Congressman Ginta's staff—they've all been very supportive. But we've, what we, but what we know is that we're not going to be able to make real progress until we're able to show them that there are hundreds, if not thousands, of people. Um, across the state, and particularly here on the seacoast, supporting us. I mean, that's just the way politics works. Um, so that's one of the that's another reason why this or association was formed was to just mobilize support and show people that we've got the, the the backing that we need. The first priority right now is to have NOAA lift the restrictions that are in place. Um, there is a meet. We've hired a lobbyist. Um, to help in our efforts, and there's a meeting on, in, a, in Connecticut on April 21st and 23rd, where we hope that at least some temporary relief, relief will be available. Um, but there are broader and longer-term issues that need to be addressed to protect the rights of charter boat operators. And I think, you know, and I, I can't speak for less than the and the charter boat operators, but I think there's a real commitment and a real realization that, you know, that they're in it for the long haul. That you know that, that unless some some real changes take place, that they're always going to be at risk of being um, impacted like they have been. So um, we're really hoping that this association become can become the vehicle for this. <clears throat> what we're what we're looking for is really your help in spreading the word, um, particularly to businesses in the Beach District. Um, they're the ones that are going to be impacted by this. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure again Les can talk about you know the impact that um, you know that his business and other businesses bring to motels and restaurants. I'm sure that if you ask them, they can tell you how many of their customers or people that are coming in for the weekend to go fishing. Um, if these regulations don't change, they're going to be impacted. So um, please, please spread the word. And again, if you're interested in more details, you can go to the website um, and. Um, you might actually want to hear from a fisherman. I, I told these guys when I helped them, I said, you know, I've never even, I've never even gone fishing once. And believe me, without so, Chris, the, the organization would have put So, so we started in Hampton with just a, I'm sorry, go ahead. Could you speak? I just want the website again, if you could do that again. Uh, the website is 
G O M C R F A dot com. G O M C R F A dot com. And what is the cost to join? Uh, well, if you go to the website, it has a variety of different. Could you, sir, could you I'm sorry, Les Eastman, Eastman's fishing fleet. Thanks for being here, Uda. Um, the reason it's Saturday, there's only six or seven of us over in um, over in, at the uh, library in Hampton, and it's grown. To la the last meeting we had at the uh, cafeteria, thanks to David O'Connor, Principal O'Connor, we must have had 150 people. We only have 65 members, but a lot of them are pending, and, 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 and the people that have joined initially, is, you know, the, the charter boats per party boat is $500, you know, per boat. Six pack boats are 250. Local businesses are 250. Recreational voting members are fifty dollars, and recreational fishermen are twenty-five. Um, the story is so complicated as far as you know the, the, the different types of rules and regulations. It, it's almost impossible to explain to somebody. Chris has been going to meetings for since September. Still, still, still it's, 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 you know, even even people that do it for a living, it's difficult to you know to pin down when you can go, what you can catch. You know, it, it changes so rapidly. They don't tell you anything. We are going into the season right now, not knowing what we can catch, even if we can go fishing. I mean, May 1st is a new fishing year. They're supposed to come out with our fishing regulations. We don't even know yet. People call all spring. This, my particular company we've been running for the last few years during the winter. Obviously, this year we were shut down, thank God, because the winter didn't produce any weather to go anyway. We wouldn't have been out any days anyway. But, but I mean, for the last couple of winters, we went January, February, March. Uda, person that can right here in the middle, you depend on the fishing boats. I mean, that's one restaurant that would close. But I have boat. a lot of them. Yeah, a lot of them. A lot of my customers go to your restaurant. And, and, and uh, all the hotels. I mean, these people that come in April and November and December, they don't come for the they don't come for the day. They don't they don't drive down from Manchester and come for the day. They come from New Jersey. They come from Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. They spend four, five, six days. They come down to catch a lot of fish. You know, and not ridiculous about the fish. No one wants conservation more than the fishermen. I mean, it's, it's, without without fish, we're, not, we're out of business anyway. It doesn't matter. So you know, as far as numbers go, as far as you know, size limits go. We're all for it. Bring it on. We don't care about that. But they, and when we first got this, this fight, you know, okay, the um, the commercial fishermen are relatively speaking to the population, a very small group of people. If you pump the boat, there's 27 permits in the state of New Hampshire, three or four per boat, because that's how you do it nowadays. You don't have to catch enough fish to survive. Um, the charter for hire, myself, very small amount of people for the, for, you know, relative to the population. Now you're bringing the recreational, they're under the same rules that we're under. <coughs> that's, thousands, that's, that's half the population voting block that either want to go fishing or might want to go. If you want to take your son out to go fishing right now in the Gulf of Maine, you cannot go. Actually, until the rules come out for May 1st, you cannot even catch a bass, a mackerel, a flounder off the, off the beach. You can go to jail. That's, that's how strict it is. And people don't realize it yet because they, they implemented the rules, the closures, they call rolling closures during the... Uh, during the Middle of the, November 12th, and they shut me down completely. One of my two of my big months now, because of people here wouldn't understand it, but the, the Ocean Pollock, big, 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 big business. Everyone in my pipeline comes from Pennsylvania, and upstate Vermont, you know, Canada. And they come down for the big, you know, 20, 30 pound, 15, 20 fish limit, you know, Pollock. And those people are no longer coming because, you know, because they closed it. I mean, we couldn't go fishing, period. They opened it back up in December. We had a phenomenal December. And people stayed at the hotels, people went to the restaurants, and, you know. But the recreational person that doesn't know what's going on yet is going to find out very rapidly when they come down to the Hampton State Park, try to pay $7 to buy up the car or buy gas or buy breakfast or buy lunch or go to the convenience store or whatever. And the state of New Hampshire knows the beach is a cash cow for the state. There's no, it's not a big secret, you know, how much money comes from the seacoast area. And it's a domino effect. You shut down the, you know, the, the fishing companies have the whale watches, have the night cruises. If you don't have the fishing, you're not going to have the whale watches or the cruises because you're not going to be able to afford to stay in business. One business in Rye already went out of business. Two in Newburyport. A couple others will fall very shortly. I'm fairly fortunate. I'll be a couple of years, but after a couple of years, I'll be out of business myself. And the domino effect is going to be great. You know? So if any hotels or any businesses in the, in the precinct that, that think they should help out, they should help out. And we've raised eleven to twelve thousand dollars in you know one meeting. Eleven to twelve thousand dollars doesn't go. I mean, two meetings with three serves, you know, twenty-five percent of that. I mean, our lobbyists and our law firm. I mean, the, the money goes like this. So we need a lot of money, and, and people don't realize it. But it's a real big, real big issue that people aren't aware of yet. And people need to be aware of it. I mean, imagine coming to the beach. For vacation and not being able to go fishing off the bridge, 
with your own boat. I mean, it's huge. It's huge, and I don't think people realize it. They will start realizing it if it doesn't change May 1st. The problem is that the law is changing on May 1st is they're going to come down and they're, going, they're not going to notice the difference. Okay, we're going out to catch our fish. You know, what's the limit today? What's the size limit? Great. But, but it's the future. You know, what are we going to do in September, October if they close it again? We're letting them get away with it. We're uniquely blessed in New Hampshire to have a left wing and a right wing, whatever your political aspirations are. But we have AL way to the right. We have Jaheen Shaheen on way to the left. It's perfect. Both camps are 100% behind us, including most, I would say 99% of the uh, legislature are all behind us 100%. But it's a federal thing. We need money to fight it. The law is very, very vague, confusing at best. Um, you know, the law firm is looking at that, how to, how, how to address letters and to confront NOAA. National Fisheries, same, you know, basically the same organization. But it's, um, it's, a, it's a tough battle. And the, uh, he, he used the, the, the uh, figure 6.7 million. I think the, the two senators from different camps both use around 100 million dollars. The full economic impact, ultimately, on the seacoast. If you close down Rye, if you close down Hampton, uh, and there's not mostly ports, but it's mostly industrial. But I mean, but all, all the all the recreational people, like, you know, th that's a big voting block. What else do you want to know? <laughs> I just wanted. I have a question list. Yeah, the the uh, people who came to that meeting where there were 150 people, where were they from? What were they? Were yeah, they like, all like, fishermen like Chris, or? Like, like Chris said, we have a lot of them were boat owners. Half, I was a half recreational fisherman, just concerned. Okay. Obviously, obviously, the people that are making a living at it, like myself, were all there. Um, but we had people drive from New York State to come to a meeting that lasted an hour and 45 minutes. Have you thought of having a meeting? Uh, for the business owners at the beach? We're having a full meeting for everybody. We're, we're inviting, um, it's, it's kind of dependent on who's going to show up primarily. We've invited um, Kelly herself and Jean Shaheen. The, the one of them come, we're going to you know, keep their camp as you know, the, the highlight of the meeting. But, the, but both camps have sent representatives to all our meetings when we ask. Mm -hmm. So the next meeting on the 20th at the Hampton Cafeteria, Hampton Academy, will include, you know, we'll do Wait, wait, 20 say that again. It's the Hampton the Academy. Hampton Academy, six thirty. And what's the date? April, April 20th. March it's Monday night. And um, we're, we invite, and the, whenever we invite them, they always come. The representatives to, to, to the uh, to the major uh, political parties, mm -hmm. and also the, um, yeah. the, um, the the press. The press has been there too. Yeah. And they've been really they've been really supportive, but it doesn't seem to get anything done. Like we are, we we're blessed to have New Hampshire 100 percent behind us, but we have Massachusetts. We have Maine. Maine is, 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 is more like New Hampshire. They, they're kind of on our side. They're pushing. Mm -hmm. um, Massachusetts, generally, the governor and most of the legislative branches are on our side. They wrote mm -hmm. letters to NOAA that they've, you know, they've, they've expressed their you know, concern. But the two major senators in Massachusetts kind of you know, write their form letter and don't, really don't want to hear about it. So, um, but we're working on them slowly but surely. Is, uh, yes. Are you telling it just to... No, you can't believe it, can you? You can't believe it. It's unbelievable. You're telling me that from November, starting in November, all of the fleets in Maine, New Hampshire, and Massachusetts were not allowed to go May 12th, up. May 12th, fishing closed in the Gulf of Maine. Nobody could November think of it. November 12th. November 12th, it closed. They reopened it December 1st for the month, which right. was good for me, but most places are closed and not many recre recreational fishermen go in December, but it's a huge month for me. But um, then they closed it again January, which didn't matter this year. They opened it again February, which didn't matter this year. March and April isn't looking too bright either. But, um, but I can't, right now I can fish, and I'm opening up in, in a week and a half. But I have to go all the way to the 43 degree line, which is 37 miles. In April, that's tough to do. You know, and, and, and you can't even catch haddock. You only catch redfish and pollock. And there's no pollock around in the spring. So you're catching redfish, which is a great fish. People love it, but to go 37 miles in the middle of April, it's tough. On a whole different thing, no? yep. uh, still on a fishing thing. Yep. What really disturbs me is when I go in, I'm going to name the, the, the supermarket, Hannaford's. Yep. And I look at that f that fish display, and I see products from Norway, from Thailand, from Korea, from Vietnam. Is there anything that could be done, or is there anything done to reduce one of the, the imports? Yeah, one of the problems. up our local fishing industry? One of the problems is that, you know, the, the, um, the you know, I don't want to except anybody's toes, but just groups like Pew or, or Greenpeace, I mean, they, they, they work, they have millions and millions of dollars, they work to make sure that the, the you know, they call it sustainable fisheries. Well, 
you know, commercial fishing is, is a, it's a tough. You know, it's such, like people that have done well and survived it, have been, you know, are still doing it, still making money. But it's com completely different when you bunch in recreational. That means every, that means no matter who you are, you can't take your son and go fishing. I never, I can't, even, I, I could never, I was kind of laughed, you know, laughed at doing some of the meetings. I never, in a million years, I would never even imagine saying the government says you can't go fishing with your son and catch a, and catch a fish. I, I can't, even, I can't comprehend that. But they did it. And, and, and we don't do something. I mean, they have, they have a lot of pressure on them now, but it's not enough. Not enough. Just add, one of the things that, that really registered with the, uh, with the state legislator is the fact that um, New Hampshire runs the risk of being the first state in the country deprived of its rights to fish in the ocean. And that's because of the fact that we have such a small coastline and just the way that the um, the restrictions go in, in place. The, the closures go in blocks, lat latitude and longitude. So like we can go fishing this month, but we have to go above the 43 degree line which is far, we can do it, or we have to go out too far to, to, to get it done. Now how about the rest of the East Coast? Are they it depends the on where you go. That's, that's one, of the, one of the flaws in the law. The law is called the magnuson Stevenson Act. It's a very lengthy law that was that was designed in 1996 to, for good reasons, for conservation. But it wasn't geared towards us. It was geared towards commercial fishing. And, but, we're, but we're in there. And so, and so as a result, um, the, uh, the closures are kind of like, you don't have to discriminate against you know one one state to another. Well, south coast of Mass can on the other side of Cape Cod down in New Bedford that area can fish for cod. Different limits, different sizes. Uh, on Long Island can, uh, Rhode Island can, mm -hmm. and they are. Sus suspect is the fact that one of the members that votes on this stuff is, runs a party boat business out of Point Jude, Rhode Island. You know, <laughs> <laughs> just by chance he can go out all every day, but. Yeah. Yeah. But, we, but, we, but this, to, the, the reason that to, the, what he was trying to get to is that the closures are depending on where you are. If you go up to the middle of Maine, down, it's closed all the way to Cape Cod. So Massachusetts, most of Massachusetts is blocked out of it. But they do have some parts of Massachusetts that are, that are fishable. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and, they change, and they change all the time. But I mean, I'm trying to run a business. I, I don't even know what I can catch next month. Good question. Yes, ma'am. Is it just cod fish or is it cod and hat? Cod and hat. Okay, so that tells me if you go out and you're paying the 70 bucks or whatever you charge on the boat for the all-day boat, and I'll take my grandson or I'll take a friend or a neighbor out. If we catch a haddock or a cod, we have to throw it back. Right now you can't eat yeah, can't. Right. Oh, right so now you can't can go. Oh, you can, you can go, but you have to go so far out. Right, but let's say we're not going far out because the weather is shitty. I mean, yep. I'm going, yep. I mean, the, <laughs> no, the it's normal day. Yeah. It's April, <laughs> the month of today, the, the month of the year, so we're going out fishing. We're catching a haddock, we're catching a nice 40 pound cod, which is uh, unheard of. Yeah. We have to throw it back. Absolutely. So now you're going to tell me, I paid my money, and, you tell the, and you're telling me I have to throw that fish back? Absolutely. You know, you know what people will say. I wouldn't want to tell you, but I tell them. <laughs> 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 you know what, you know what, uh, I wouldn't want to have breakfast the next day. You don't want to go there, right? <laughs> That person will be pissed. I know. Because they don't understand it and they're going back home wherever they come from. We had a child last September. They came all the way from upstate New York. They didn't know the rule. They, I mean, it's, it's, right. It's public I remember in September. They went, 1st. They, went, they went to breakfast with you and right. they, they went on our boat and they, they, they got out there and they had the crew would make them throw the big haddock back and they, they, they would they would live it. You know, you know that we, was we the, the, the cornfish. Are they also going after the lobster men now? They're, 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 they're everything. They they're, they're not, I know that. They're not. They're not stopping well, not anywhere. Because they get the yeah. in the yeah. Yeah. The, 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 everything is like, for instance, for instance, the, the mortality rate is a big thing. You know, the, 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 they use the science that's so flawed that all their all their information comes from flawed science, and they and they utilize it the way they want to utilize it. You know, so that's how it goes. Actually, this is. Oh, thank you. Right, I, I so, what, what is it, I guess, so what can we do? Yep, you, can join, you can join the association, and you can, and you can tell other people to join the association. But we need the money to fight it legally. And, and, I mean, like, the law firm says it's, it's, such, it's such a wishy-washy law that it's going to be impossible to get a judgment in, you know, in favor, but they can word letters strong enough to make them take notice. And and, 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 and they write letters, or even even do an email these days to the, to the different... Uh, I mean, I will say the, the, the New Hampshire delegation on both sides of the fence has been phenomenal to us. I mean, they've just been pushing. I mean, Kelly Ayo's office call, has called me um, five times in the last two weeks just, just to, to say, how's it going? with everything going all right? You, you know, 
just to know what's going on. You know, they're, they're on it, but the, but it's not being. You know, and, and she's in charge of the Commerce Department, which funds, you know, NOAA and National Fisheries. I mean, that's the way you know, the money <coughs> usually does does good things. I mean, you well, shut off the money, and <laughs> so there's a couple things that you, you that this is just my observation. When we were trying to get the um, the state to fund. Um, the, the new buildings, the, the fifteen million dollars. Yep. We went at it as a as a as a campaign, and one of the things we did was, and this being in the industry, and I'm sure you have a mailing list or you have an email list of your customers. Yep. Is to get this out there, and what we did is, I'm originally from Salem, New Hampshire, and I knew a couple of the reps in Salem, so I went and called them individually. There was another guy from Nashua years ago. He knew some people in Nashua. He called them. If you get this word out, especially dealing with these settlers in Massachusetts, I know we, we have a lot of Massachusetts customers. Yep. Uh, and say, can you call, if you know, um, if you know um, Elizabeth Warren, call her up. Please, we need you to call. Because people calling them, and the way to do that, not you calling them, because they don't know who you are no. from, from New Hampshire, but 20 of your customers that, that come to your party vote every year. Hence the name. That's why the name change it was basically structured for New Hampshire. But we, we said that that's not good enough because Northern Mass is even more populated than in New Hampshire. So we went after it's the Gulf of Maine because all of Northern Mass, Newport, uh, Gloucester, they're all involved. So they're they're joining. They're, they're, most of them have joined. They're on board with us. And we've also associated with other groups that have been working for for several years, Stell Wagon Bank Association and, and many others. It's, it's a pretty big group, but um, I don't I don't. We need, yeah. We we are getting the word out as best we can through through emails and through uh, press releases and. All right. And, uh, I know my hotel. I get people all the time. So yeah. A lot of, a lot of guys will come for just to go fishing for the weekend. And you know they were there from the, the, the day they after, are, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the smell. Yeah. I have a question yep. for you. So, who's going to enforce this? I mean, if you've got somebody surf casting on the Hampton Beach. Uh, well, the Hampton fishing game in the in the, in the yeah. and and so somebody brings there. somebody oh, puts time. really so somebody puts a boat in the in the harbor and goes out with a, a just a small boat, yep. a twenty one footer, with a couple of people in it. They catch some fish. Can't catch, can't catch. But they don't know that. Fishing, yeah. Too bad. And so when they, they come back, they, so when they come back, they the they're going to have the fishing game sitting at the, yeah. at the right, right there in the harbor, it's giving them a the fine. The fines, the fines, the federal fines are very very hefty. That's quite a. That's quite interesting. They're there now. They're there now. I didn't know. I didn't know this was going on. Yeah, I've been fishing since I was a little kid. Plum Island at yep. night, caught the, the gas lantern. Um, I'm sure you're, you're showing know. your rage now. <laughs> caught at the gas lantern. And folks, you know, in the harbor and stuff. And yeah. uh, Kathy Silver and I were, you know, she was a warm beggar from uh, years past. And we were talking about that. The and I used to buy them. <laughs> the question is. Right now, when my nephews and nieces come up, they've got to buy a license, which, you know, it's tough. They're only here for a couple of days, but depending here it is, get the license. They go down the jetty or, or wherever and just throw a line in and, and occupy the yeah. afternoon. Where does that money go? That's a state, the license is a state license, even though it's reciprocal from right. state to state. The actual license that you buy from the state of New Hampshire is, is, is it goes to goes to the state of New Hampshire and it's to fund it however they decide to fund Fishing game is always looking for money. They're always kind of up behind the eight ball with money anyways. But. And I understand, you know, they do that with fresh water, but they stock the fresh water. Yeah. So what are they doing with your, you know, the seafood? You know, really good question. <laughs> we, I don't know if you can go and say, hey, you know, maybe take some of that money and help us out. And, because I, I'm totally behind you. I, I can't see it, you know, I see a trawler just ripping everything up and throwing away fish or whatever they have. The herring population is shot to hell. I'm sorry. Yep. Um, and the stripers have gone down. And, you know, I used to basically in September watch the beach, see the, the uh, terns going in and out and grab my pole and catch the striper right off the beach. Um, are, are they doing anything to help you in regard to that the fishing it, game? It, that's it, a, a whole different issue, but it's, it's but the fishing the fishing game is we work with the fishing game all the time. And Doug Grout, who's the director of the fishing game, is involved in all this. He hasn't been to any meetings yet, but he hasn't been invited yet either. Um, yeah, there, there's so many <laughs> there's so many different issues. You know, the, the, when you get to the state, he's involved in a lot of the, he's on the council, the federal council. He's also involved in the, in the disaster relief money being given to the to the um, co-op and small checks to us that you know, 
don't make up a week, but you know, whatever. I mean, but he, um, yeah, there's not any money left in the. They don't have any money to give us. I, I would say, I don't have figures up for you, but um, he's. I I like Doug. I get a lot of them. He seems like he's on everybody's side, which is you know, you know, trying to help everybody that he can, but he, they have to, you know, don't do so much. Yeah, I I find it. Amazing that the, I, 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 kid I, on the jetty is pleading the cod stock of yeah. But my uh, well, hopefully they, I mean, they, they put forth a not to take anybody's time, but they put forth a new a new law called Framework 53. We're hoping that goes through for May 1st, which will be somewhat of a relief. But they still in Framework 53 have closures for cod and haddock September October, which would kill us, you know, in Chatham for higher. What, <clears throat> what percentage of all the fish caught is done commercially and recreationally? Do you know? Mm -hmm. It's hard. To, it's hard to estimate the recreational because they do, they call Joe. They, they do a lot of it by survey. We, <coughs> like the, people that have permits, like for like, for us, we do VTR. Actually, we do electronic VTRs now. We have computers on the boats that actually plug in every day, and so they get that information directly. Of course, it's only as good as the person entering the information. But a lot of their a lot of their um, information comes from calling people. You call you know. Uh, uh, whoever on, on the phone he's at, he's at the VFW just had 14 beers and you know oh, I caught 45 haddock and there was 45 <laughs> pounds and, you know, that goes, you know they, 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 don't, they just take that one phone call and they say well it must have been 20% yes. of that population went fishing today they must have all done the same thing they caught it all yeah. that information goes into their, into their, into their data and that's, how, that's what they use for uh, figures hmm. you know obviously the guy didn't catch 45 haddock and they weren't 45 pounds they don't come that big but according to him, after enough beers, they did. <laughs> <laughs> the, old, the old story, you know, fishing tale, and there's some good ones. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, I, I don't, as a uh, municipality, I don't think we could join um, your organization. No, we'll get the word out to we want, as yeah. many businesses as we can and, 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 and people. I really think so. I think it, it would really be depends great. on the, the, the you know, striving economy on the seacoast. I mean, it, 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 that's a big, when you come down, you go to, Fancy restaurant one night, you have a cookout another night, you go fishing one day, whale watching the next, you go to the beach. There's all these things you could do on vacation. You take that away from New Hampshire, they're going to go someplace else. Yeah, definitely agree. There are so many people I know, my husband being one of them, who goes fishing every year. He doesn't have a clue about this. He doesn't know anything about this. Not many people know. It's amazing. But I mean, you've got to bring it out in layman's turn so they understand. Did you know not all a lot of data and stuff like that. You just gotta say what it the way it is. Hey, if you come down here from Berlin and bring your little boat down here, don't bother because you cannot go fishing. Leave you might as well stay at home. I mean that's pretty much what it is. Which is of course affecting the tourism for all of us. That's exactly. That's what, saying. That's what we're saying. That's what you know, we're it's, right. not just, it's not just going out on the boat, you need to buy gas, you got to buy some sandwiches, you probably have breakfast before, you have dinner or lunch when you come in, you need, you want a hotel room because you're staying overnight, you maybe have to run over to Walmart, you need to go to a, a t-shirt shop and buy a new t-shirt because you have fish guts all over it. And everybody, and everybody I mean, goes, even, even, the sa <laughs> even the sailboats and the kayaks have a fishing pole on them, I mean, even the, you own a sailboat, you have a fishing pole on It is what it is. Sure. No, and I, I got to give uh, Tracy a lot of credit. She's been voicing uh, voicing this around town. So she's been great. Where is she? I don't know. She should be here. Where's Mark? Where's Mark? Where's Mark tonight? He wasn't coming anyway, but uh, he was, a, was coming. Mark was afraid I was going to make him speak. <laughs> All right. So again, April. Oh my April 20th. Oh, okay. What night is that? Monday. Monday. A Monday night. All right. At the Hampton Academy at 6:30. Cafeteria. And bring a check. Yeah. Yes. Well, bring, bring people. Bring just people. come, and then if you feel obligated, to, I see. You, you, can, you, can, you, can, you can you can join on the website. The website has a. Uh, and the website too. Well, the website is again. G o m c r f a dot com. Excellent. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Good luck with everything. Thank you. I think they're hungry. Talk about fish. <laughs> 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 you can't get any. Quite a fish. You can get it from Vietnam. Yeah. <laughs> or Iceland or something. Yeah. All right. So we have to talk about old business. Bob, do you have any old business? Hold on.
it's brand new old business. I want to congratulate you. You did an incredible job of promoting and accomplishing the precinct owning a new parking lot. And everything that's happening down there. Yeah. It's not over yet, believe me. I've been on the phone 20 times this week. But the only reason you're on the phone is because of everything you did before you got on the Thank phone. You. And what's happening at that end of the beach just makes this parking lot a jewel of an opportunity. A couple of weeks ago, the planning board was discussing uh, rehab of the Harris facility down there. Uh, every time anything happens down there, you're going to have more cars than spaces. So I, I just think this is a wonderful chance, and you caused it. Thank you. The, the, the project at the Summer Wind, uh, where the Summer Wind is, is going to be a great, great project. I think that's moving forward soon. Uh, and that's going to have a lot of new units there. On the bottom of N Street? Or that, is that, is that between J and K? J, J and K. K. And then the, there's the project at, on N Street, which is going to be a, a big uh, thing. So when you're looking at any of the stuff that's being built, like you said, they only need one, one car if it's a studio or two cars. Or, well, those people are going to have friends visiting. They're going to have people staying over, and um, I think parking is, is a huge issue. I, I think we have to, you know, Portsmouth keeps building parking garages, and, and they're, not, they're, they're smart. So hopefully we can move forward that way. Any other old business? No, that's it. Maureen? I don't have anything. All right. Um, I think the, the annual meeting went well. I want to thank Richard for doing a great job, um, and all the people that, that came. And our clerks and our uh, supervisors of the checklist and everybody, thank you very much. Uh, and all the checkers and the counters. And it's just, it's, 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 there's a lot that goes on on that day. And, and, and then even even getting uh, Stephen making sure we have the chairs delivered and, and uh, signs out, everything. It's, it's a lot going on that day. And uh, we're a small little group and we have the same people that do everything. And I, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I'd like to thank Jimmy Trainer with the Boardwalk Cafe as well. That's right. Yeah. For the lunches and the <coughs> providing lunch for the people Very and nice. supper, was it? Mm -hmm. And uh, and for afterwards. We appreciate yeah. it. That thank was you. a great time and uh, we got to all laugh and have fun. Mm -hmm. All right. I'd like to thank the fire department for not having too many EMS calls while we're holding the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> and they were great. They moved out their vehicles. They made enough space for us. Um, we, we really, and, and, you know, I know Keith was here and we, 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 we congratulated him on. The people that work in this town, tremendous. Everybody works well together. Uh, we have some hiccups with the politics, like Keith said, but, you know, I think, I think we're moving in, in a good direction. I've been on this beach a long time, and the, the town beach relationship I think with Beth has it, it, been great the last few years, and I, I want to keep it moving that way. So, and then Channel Twenty Two, I don't know how you can make <laughs> make it work down in those bays down there, and uh, that was great. Um, and you come to all these meetings. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much. All right, new business. New business. Yeah. New business. Uh, a couple of things. One, all the streets, as I understand it, on the east side and the w west side of Ashworth Avenue, the South Beach and the Island District are to get notices from the town about a meeting concerning residential parking and an opportunity to put some input into whether or not they do anything. Uh, before that meeting is held, there will be a similar meeting held involving all the numbered streets on North Beach Ancient Highway and Boar's Head. The meetings are separate because they anticipate enough interest and they don't really have the space to accommodate everybody in one meeting. But as I understand it, there should be notification going out to those people soon. And hopefully it'll address some of the issues. And also with that is, is if you have issues that you want us to address on that after you, that we find out the meeting. Because we'll, we'll be there. At least, at least one of us, but probably three of us will be at that meeting. Depending on when it's at. Um, yeah, so I think, I think it's good. I think we can move forward with that. And if you don't live in one of those streets, but you're in the precinct and you feel you have a parking issue, notify the town manager. This is my understanding. If you feel there's an issue in your street and you tell him, he's open to including that street in the discussion. 
and one other bit of new business, which is not street related directly. At the May meeting, Tom McGurk will come to the precinct and discuss the mechanical nature of the Zoning Board of Appeal, of variance, or adjustment, explaining what it is they look to for you to get a variance, when you need a variance, and all the pieces that have to come into play. And this isn't just something if you're Green and Company building a seven-story, multi-million dollar project. Anybody who wants to do something in their home may come under this sort of issue. So you should kind of be aware of it. And hopefully he'll kind of unravel some of the mystery of that process. It's better to know a little bit about you've got to go through the process before you start the process than find out you're not quite where you should be when you're in it. Um, I'm going to, I don't know if it's old or new business, we're going, uh, we're talking about the parking lot. So I've been hearing from a lot of people of different ways we should do different things. But first we have to get the money to pay for the parking lot. So Vaughn Council is a bit of a nightmare. John knows this. Um, and they're like, oh yeah, we'll move forward and let's get the money and oh yeah, we, maybe we'll close in July or August, maybe September. I'm like, and no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking yesterday. Um, so the process that you go through um, just takes a long time. So everybody is calling me, asking me, what are you doing? How are you doing this? What, how much is this going to be? What's that? I don't know yet. But I have been dealing with um, a local banker who, who will, uh, who's, I was hoping I was going to have a rate. I just checked the phone. I uh, had quoted me some Tentatively quoted me some really good rates on what they call a bond anticipation note. And because we're a municipality, we don't have to pay all the taxes and fees that all of us would have to do if we were doing our own. Uh, and he was talking under 3%. So if that's the, and they don't care about collateral or anything because we have such great um, financials. And, and, and we have a really good rating, so I, I called Stephen up and he immediately, I needed two years of uh, financials, Stephen gave us three, because we always like to have more than we need. Uh, so we went, I went ahead with them, I'm waiting to hear from them, I was really hoping I would have more information today. Um, so if that's the case, we'll be able to close, get the property, do what we need to do, and then when the bond comes in, the bond pays off that, that note. Mm -hmm. and, um, so I'm just waiting to hear, and I'll let everybody know where we're at as soon as I know more. All right? Mr. Chairman, I think one, you might be overlooking one little piece of business. Historically, the first meeting after the annual meeting, you usually um, elect a chairman. Well, we were, I was just going to get to that. Oh, okay. Uh, I thought maybe you yeah. forgot. <laughs> so that, that's... <laughs> so is... Um, do we want to bring that up? Does it yes, happen? I'd like to nominate Chuck Rage for chairman. Second. All those in favor? Done. How's that? Is that good enough for you? There you go. Uh, okay. I would make a second nomination that Chuck Rage be commissioner of parking as well as chairman. <laughs> <laughs> Objection. <laughs> okay. I would make a uh, more seriously a second motion to nominate Maureen Buckley as the vice chairman. I'll second that. Okay, all in favor? Yay. Who are both for you? There you go. All right, where are we now? They're on uh, minutes, I think. Okay. Approval of minutes. So we have, we have the minutes of March 11th, March 25th, and March 27th. Do I have a motion to approve the, min the minutes as written? I move to approve the March 11th min minutes as written. I have a second. I'll second that. All in favor? Okay, March 25th. I move to appoint, approve the minutes of March 25th as written. I'll second. All in favor? March 27th, our annual meeting. Move to approve the minutes for March 27th as written. I'll second. All in favor? Done. That was easy. Okay. A question. Yes. When, what do you think the time frame will be that we have the paper for the problem? I don't know, Walter. 
Do you think it'll be within 30 days? Or I don't know. No, no idea. I don't want to say anything. I don't know. We, do we have a signed commitment for that property? Oh yeah. Oh yes. Okay. Yeah, we have a PMS signed commitment for the property. Yes. I like to do things yesterday. No, I understand. I so. think there's, there's, there'll be no, there's, there's no possibility of someone coming in. No, no, we have we have a PNS. Pulling the rug off and, and right now, I have I have this this paperwork here that I have to pass to Stephen. It's fourteen been, pages. Uh, survey. It was surveyed by. Uh, so we have a survey of property done, which we don't have to pay Yeah. I walked up the other day looking for the. Uh, Walter did the survey. I walked. Up, <laughs> That's right. I walked up the other day looking for the. Hey. Yeah. No, because I was just wondering because right. I mean, the machines were in place up at the corner of P Street to tear down. You know, it'd be nice to well, walk right down the street. We're gonna get. Uh, yeah. But we're going to get a. Some, I know uh, we have to have three bits. So I three understand because we're a municipality. So, anybody like to speak public comment? Hi, I'm Kathy Silver from Blue Ocean Discovery Center. I'd like to first of all thank the voters of the precinct for continuing to support us. We had an open house last week, and the commissioners very nicely came and uh, presented us with a check for $2,500, which we greatly appreciate. So that's the first thing. So thank you all very much for that. And I actually have a lot of news. We've set our spring and our schedules. We will be open on Saturday, April 18th um, from... Uh, 10 to 3.30 that day, we're going to do a big Earth Day cleanup at 10.30. So if anybody wants to come and help clean the beach for our Earth Day, that's Saturday, April 18th. You will, if you come that day, you'll see a lot of Girl Scouts there as well because there's a very big Girl Scout meeting going on at the um, Winnicott High School and we'll also be there with our huge inflatable whale and um, I'll be there with live animals and they're all working on a badge that day. That unfortunately is closed to the public because I think there's going to be more than 250 Girl Scouts, a lot, and they're, they'll be coming down to the beach, they'll be doing a beach cleanup as well as touring the Discovery Center. But that 1030 cleanup is open to the public and we very much would, we need help. Um, we've set our dates and times for our season. We're going to be open Memorial Day weekend. That'll be our beginning opening. And on that weekend, we'll be open 10 to 3. After that, we'll be open weekends in June, again, 10 to 3, until the 20th. And then that week in June, we'll, we'll, we'll be open every day. Most schools will maybe be out by then. <laughs> I, I know the Hampton schools will be. We'll be open 10 to 3. And then finally, um, June 27th, that'll be our when we start our regular summer schedule. And we're going to be open this summer 12 to 7 on weekdays and 10 to 7 on weekends. And we purposely did that because we have a lot of camps and summer schools who want to come and visit us. And so by opening at 12 instead of 10, we can accommodate all those individual groups. So that'll be our summer schedule. So they, let me just get this right. So yeah. they, they all come earlier? Yes, they're gonna, so they'll be there so 10 to 12. So if there's a group that wants to come, they can contact you? Yes. And um, we know there's a lot of groups that come to the beach. but. Now we can accommodate them. Okay, we've got a set time for them. Okay, we will continue to have our daily beach cleanups, and we record everything we pick up and we publish it. And this is, in, you know, we go right out. You know, even though we have the beach rake and all the rest of it, there's still a huge amount of debris out there. Um, beach rake doesn't pick up cigarette butts, but we do. So. 
that will continue. Um, last month I talked about volunteers. I, again, that plea is always out there. We particularly are interested in maybe retired citizens who live at the beach who could come and volunteer with us. Um, we've reached out to many of the schools and we do need volunteers. And we are looking for a sponsor. I mentioned that we have daily beach cleanups, but we also have scavenger hunts. And we would like someone to sponsor these events in the way of maybe stainless steel water bottles or beach totes with their names on them so that we can give out prizes. Um, a kid who does a scavenger hunt would love to have a prize, but we can't afford ourselves to produce something. But if you'd like to, as a business, if you would like to make something or you know, partner with us, we would be very happy to distribute you know, your gift to them, as long as it was environmentally friendly. That's why I said stainless steel, not plastic for the water bottles. And how um, many items do you need for something? Um, I'm not sure. Okay, we, we just were, you know, uh, I, I'm not exactly sure, but we can talk. Okay, a lot. And like I say, it's perfect. It's a chance for you to advertise. Okay, as a support, like our, our beach cleanup t-shirts have several companies' names on the back. So we, we definitely would like to do business with somebody. And finally, <laughs> we've talked a lot about parking tonight, but we are in need of donated parking spaces. It's very difficult for me to tell people that after they are good enough to volunteer their time to fight the traffic and come down to the beach, that th they then have to pay for a parking place. If anybody has a parking lot or a parking place that they could donate some spots to us, we would greatly appreciate it. We do, we are given two in the state park, which is fine, you know, but we have more volunteers than that. Yeah. So we're looking for some places. So, okay, so. thank you. <laughs> All right, Charlie? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, uh, you gave me two. No, no, you gave me two copies. Well, I think I gave everybody in this room a little information. I'm going to make this quick. Um, I went before the selecting. I think it was March 23. I went before the HPAC. I believe it was Thursday the 26th. I'm coming here now to ask for support. I'm not sure of the date. I don't know if anybody in this room knows the date. There's a spring meeting coming up upstairs behind the seashell soon. They said the date that night. I don't know if anybody knows it offhand, but if, um, if we can get the word out on it. But the, the numbers, I think I've given everybody a copy. I might have missed you one night. And what I'm looking at is the April and October which is something they had taken off a couple of years ago and now they, they put it back on. And when Les and Chris Munns were just in here, I mean, that's, that's a real disaster, okay? If you came over the bridge or started down at the harbor on this side and just started and went to Uda's business, the Marianne Motel, the Blue Jay, <laughs> PJ, you know, Bill at the Old Bridge Market, Patriots Corner, and you asked all of those businesses what kind of an effect, and they'd all say it's, it's a serious effect. That's a disaster. But that's 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 a federal issue. So that meeting on the April 20th, you know, people at home, if there's people watching this meeting, come on down to the junior high on uh, 4:20 at 6:30. What I'm looking at here is we've all talked about extending the season, and the investment that this town has made and the state has made and now private enterprise has made is, is huge. My concern is Dred's operation of the meters, okay? Take these numbers home and study them and you'll, you'll understand where I'm going. They started back in April in 2013. Now when you see that number of receipts, those are actual customers. Those are transactions, each one of those. There's the numbers, and then you can see percentage of tickets. Well, in April 2013, they took in 41,000, no tickets. Well, that was a grace period. 
That was Brian Wilson's guess. I got these numbers from Brian Wilson, the manager of the, the park. In October, you can, and this is 2013, you had 32,554 tickets. That's 4% of the, of the customers. You got April 2014, 41,178. You look at the last month here, this past October, you got $22,900. You had 11,370 customers. If you divide that, your average customer is $2.02. .02. Okay? We're hitting these people for one hit wonders. Successful businesses get repeat business. This is not going to be repeat business. This is one hit wonders. They're getting in there like, this is a little too much, we're out of here. The real number that scares the hell out of me is the 788 tickets that were written. 788 tickets times $25, which is the minimum if you pay within 15 days. After that, it goes up to, uh, it double, excuse me, it goes to it doubles, 25 to 50. After 30 to 45 days is 75, seven, um, 45 to 60 days is 100. After that, to a collection agency. This is something that really bears watching. You know, I, 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 I'm really asking for support, and like I said, study these numbers. Those tickets take in $19,700. The whole month, you only took in $23,000. That doesn't now. That doesn't tell us what it costs to take that $23,000 either. But these are all numbers. The $23,000. If you look at the very bottom. It says Calais figures include Hampton Beach, North Beach, North Hampton, and Genesis. So that twenty-three thousand is four different locations. I would dare, I would dare say that most of the tickets being written in Hampton, in Hampton. I would dare say that the seven hundred and eighty-eight people that got tickets got them in an empty parking lot on a, you know a day like today in October weather-wise. For your information, where it says Calais, total Calais, Calais figures. Calais is the name of the company. They're out of Clearwater, Florida, I believe, that, you know, they, they run the kiosks. That's, that's, that's their operation. So, when your tickets is now going to surpass your legitimate revenue, my point is when people come to the beach, they come in pairs. People, you know, when people commute to work in one, there's a person in the car. When people come to the beach, there's two or more. If you figure low, two in a car times 800 tickets, that's 1,600 people. If each one of them tells one person, you now have 3,200 people bad-mouthing Hampton Beach. We don't need it. We're just gaining traction. Things are going forward. This needs to be stopped, you know, or slowed down and to get dread to reconsider. What I've asked the commissioners to support is to recognize veteran license plates, to recognize state park plates, which you pay $85, and that money goes directly to the state parks program. It's the only dedicated plate that we have in the state. I mean, they have a conservation plate, but besides that, the state parks 85 balls. And I'm asking for those to be recognized on any weekday that school is in session. And my argument is, if the spaces are available, Dred will not lose any money, and we're going to put a community watch out there of your veterans and the people that really care about this place that will pay that extra 85 dollars. I think I put one other thing in there, it was data enforcement, and I just wrote what I gave the commissioners to please consider the weekday free parking for all veterans of state parks and any school day of the local school system. Two, meter enforcement, weekends only after the Seafood Fest until May 1st. So after the Seafood Fest, only on the weekends, and then come in all of October, weekends only, and then in April, weekends only. I, I, I dare say that if Dredd does this, they will make more money, we will be more user-friendly, and then at some point we might actually, if we get them to do this and we see it happen, then we might even get them to go for residence stickers on weekdays during the school season. And, and, and let, let the locals who spend some serious money down here get a few fringe benefits and at the same time not lose any revenue. Thank you. you won't. Thank you very much for your time. I'd like to speak.
Did you find out when that spring meeting is? No, I don't have it on my phone. I don't know what it is. That's the one where it's, it's up at the... Uh, <coughs> John Nye announced it at the HBAC. Yeah. I have it on my paperwork, but I, I didn't have a pen. <coughs> okay. yeah. Spread the word I'm anyway. Yeah, I'd like to. It's usually on Saturday. Yeah, in the morning. Tuesday at 9 in the morning. Yeah. So, just to give you my opinion on that, and, I, and, I, and I, I, I think that if the state is opening the bathrooms, the state is doing work down the beach, and they've spent a lot of money on the properties, that I think that they should collect parking. There's plenty of free parking around the beach if people are looking in the off season. And um, but people like the premium parking on the beach. They do lower the price to a dollar an hour as opposed to two dollars an hour. And I think that well, what will happen is if they're not collecting, if they're not collecting meters, they're not going to staff the beach in the off season. So. They, they have a need to make money. I don't like the fact that they're making money on tickets. I understand that, right? That's a lot of tickets. And I don't know if the signage is helping. I mean, we had, what was it, two years ago, we were towing cars left and right out of out of, out of um, lease parking spots, and those are, what, $150? And then, you know, then the signs got bigger. So I personally think that these flashing signs that they're putting out and meters are in effect signs and just a, so if anybody goes into that lot they're going to know that they have to pay that. I don't want to see anybody get a ticket but I understand the need to charge a dollar an hour or whatever it is it's a, you know I think there's also a minimum so it can be a dollar an hour right, but, a minimum. but if we want them to have because you know as well as I do none of these facilities were open after after seafood festival for years and people would come down in September. I, you know, I had people running into my hotel room, running up and down the stairs, looking in my hotel, uh, looking for bathrooms. Yep. Um, so I would rather have them open. And the only way they're going to open them, because the state doesn't have any money, is to charge to justify it by t charging for parking. So that's that's my opinion. Chuck, could I ask you? Yeah, um, of course. Could I ask you when I asked you to do the considerations was. Uh, the, on the veterans' plates and on the state parks' plates, yeah. Because my my, for lack of a better word, my argument is those spaces are available on weekdays. So let, let's put them out there for the veterans and the state parks people, the people that pay. Right. And because I'll bet you, most of the people in this room, if they could get those privileges on the weekdays in September, well, let's say in the school, we're talking the school season. Yeah. Okay. The demand's not there. I think you'd see a lot of people in this room would buy that place. You know, and, and I really think what, what I'm talking about. I really think that would gain. And, and I'm, I have, believe I understand the need for revenue. I went, went to meetings for 20 years to get bathrooms. I know about paying for them. Mm -hmm. Places never look nicer. The bathrooms look fantastic. Dread made more money with the shortest season they ever had. But now it would, you know it's get to the point again. Where you, at some point you can say, okay, we're getting greedy again. When your ticket revenue is going to surpass the legitimate revenue, when, when 788 people get tickets where if they comply with the law, it would be fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars $1,600. My argument is a lot of those people, most people want to comply with the law. Right. They're not coming down to Hampton Beach and say, I'm not paying them. You know, I'm getting a $25 ticket. They're looking around going, there's nobody here. We, they can't be charged. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I have one, one question too, Charlie. When you say whenever school's in session, yes. what school system would be the barometer? No, local is right. So if I wanted to park in Rye and Hampton was in session but Rye wasn't, how would that play out? They could consider doing the same thing. Dred could consider doing the same no. thing in Rye. No. You know, when I brought it up to Brian Wilson about the state park place, they have a problem with the state park put up there. People are going in there to, um, I don't know, what's, what's the biggest one? Is it Wallace Sands? Wallace Sands up there. They're finding out it's costing them money. Right now, if you get the state park plate, you can go to Hampton Beach. What we used to call the state park is down by the bridge. That's you know, the state park. But that's what we that's always call them. But in reality, it's the whole, the whole beach. The locals always call that the state park mm -hmm. yeah. down there. And you, 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 can have, you have the privilege down there. They're finding out at Wallace Sands that they're losing money because of those state park plates. And I said to them, this might be your way out. 
where you turn around and say you go on the weekdays, you know, and on the weekends they could generate the revenue. It would make it fair for everybody to, to use it and not be monopolized. I just see some confusion. If Hampton is closed, but Rye is open, and I say I qualify in Rye, but I park in Hampton, but I got a ticket, and now I'm arguing uh, I shouldn't have got a ticket. You got kind of multiple school districts, so do you have to check each one? I think I, I think you find it would work. You know, I mean, you're always gonna have to tweak no matter what you don't know, but I think it would find pretty. Um, Pretty much cookie cutter, right from every town. Okay. Yes, Richard. Chuck, sure. what day are the meters going into effect? 15th. 15th. It's normally April 1st, well, but with they, the I weather, they and then they've right? changed it to the 15th. So they haven't April. gone into effect yet. Yeah. April 15th. But, but I saw people put money in the meters. Oh, yeah. you're, you're saying <laughs> April 15th. Today's only the 8th. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it doesn't take money in this section of the beach, so are you talking about North Beach? Yeah. Up front. The whole state. Up front, the, the people have been buying tickets. Well, the ones I've seen, oh, the ones so I've seen have noticed that they're marked. Right. They're not going to be back to late May 15th. All right. So week from today is my understanding, April 15th. April 15th, yeah. that's what I've been told, so. But I don't think you can buy a ticket. No, you can't. They've been looking at it. There's no, yeah, yeah. so. Well, the signage has been better. It used to be red. All right, anybody else? No? All right. What's next? That's my agenda. Closing comments? Uh, closing comments. Closing comments. Maureen. Uh, no. <laughs> 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 no, uh, just let, pray for good weather. I know, really. Yeah. Well, on that note, I'm going to close the meeting at 640. Thank you. 640.